This is gonna be a really random video. I wanted to just get something up since it's been so long since the last time I recorded. If you wanna just get to the topic of this video, go ahead and skip ahead. I wanna talk about now uh, just some stuff going on moving into our new office space and some topics for future videos and some scheduling. So basically, moving into the new office space has kind of been a nightmare. Uh, there was a flood from the previous tenant that wasn't cleaned up, so all new flooring had to go in and it's just been a nightmare. But all of that's taken care of, should be moving into there in the next couple weeks, so that's why I've been just slammed uh, trying to get everything wrapped up with that before I could do any videos. So one thing I'd like to get some feedback on, uh, we're moving into actually some uh, decent size assembly work. We're gonna have a pretty well set up uh, pick and play stencil printer reflow oven. And on a lot of the client's boards we design, we're gonna be doing uh, full assembly. And not to turn this channel into like too vloggy or uh, non-technical, but would you guys like the idea of having on top of the technical side videos, also some like day in the life, uh, what we do, what our work consists of, uh, getting the office set up, just general stuff like that. I think it could be kind of interesting because you don't really see a lot of info out publicly about how products are designed, how electronics get assembled, all that. Uh, and I think with the setup that we're gonna have, I think it could work out pretty well. So let me know uh, what you think about that. And if you guys are on board, I can start filming, uh, getting the office set up, getting the assembly line set up, and then some of our first boards that we assemble and just kind of document the whole process. So with all that said, um, so the topic of this video, I have a couple things I wanna talk about, but the first thing so this, it's not the exact uh, schematic, it's for a client's project, it's ND8, so I can't show the actual uh, schematic, but this is the uh, regulator that we used and the same basic uh, layout. So this is a switching regulator that takes uh, 24 volts in and drops it down to 12 volts, and the 12 volts was powering uh, some inductive loads down the way. So we had this board uh, made in a small, uh, just a few, so we could test it. And when we tested it on our benchtop regulated supply at 24 volts, it worked perfect. Um, we had some few issues that we needed to iron out, but overall the board, everything was fine. After uh, we tested on our end and it worked fine, uh, but the couple issues that we had weren't anything that affected the overall usage, so we still sent it out to our client for validation. And when he tested the first board from a wall-powered uh, 24 volt supply, think of like a uh, laptop supply where it just has a fixed uh, brick, and outputs 24 volts, the second he powered it up, it burnt a hole straight through the uh, regulator. And the power supply wires weren't polarized at this point just because the cables weren't made. So the first thing I thought was, oh, reverse polarity. He just hooked it up backwards and it blew this chip. But that didn't overall make sense because this board actually has two uh, switching regulators and a couple other items that run off the 24 volts, and this was the only one that was blowing, or the only one that blew, so I'm like, doesn't make sense. So we sent him uh, the rest of the boards, I think we had like three others, and just said, double check the polarity. So he hooks it up, same thing happens. And I was, I had no idea what to think, so we kind of traced back everything and it just everything about it seemed the same as when i had it set up so after kind of racking my brain talking to another one of our electrical engineers we had a thought that the 
power brick he was using had like a five or six foot long cord and he had it still packaged, coiled up like a snake and we thought it might be having some sort of inductive spike as the board was powered on with the supply and it spiked the voltage enough to blow this regulator. And if you look at the data sheet, the maximum input voltage is rated at 24 volts with the absolute maximum being uh, 26 volts. So that only left us with a two volt leeway and hindsight's 2020, two volts, no matter what the application from your main supply is not enough headroom. So definitely that was a mistake from the get go. So we switched this to a uh, 40 volt rated supply, which is what the other switching regulator is rated at. And what we also did is the input line we had a 22 microfarad cap, which is paralleled with this 0.1 microfarad. So they were fine for the high frequency spikes, but obviously this inductive spike as it turns on wasn't uh, a short event. So we bumped up the 22 microfarad to 100 microfarad, shipped it back out and there wasn't a problem. Um, oh, one other point that also helped uh, make us think it was an inductive spike like that is if he had the power supply turned on but not plugged in to the PCB then he plugged the uh, supply into the PCB so it had already uh, stabilized it worked fine on the other board so it was only when he switched on the supply from the wall while it was plugged into the PCB so lesson with that is always check your absolute maximum uh, ratings on anything that is the first thing the board uh, gets touched from a external source. That's a good rule of thumb, whether it's power supplies or input outputs. Uh, but other than that, the board worked fine. So another quick uh, thing I just wanted to show that I actually uh, realized in this layout is something, and it's just kind of uh, some quirks with KiCad. I haven't used KiCad for more than a year or so, so I'm still kind of figuring out um, some of the issues with it. Um, but two things that I had an issue with in this board layout is if you want to have a uh, through hole that has no uh, solder solder mask but also no copper where the screw head hits it's not very intuitive how you do that so it's easy enough if you have uh, let me show it in the 3d viewer so if you have a non-plated through hole it peels back the copper a little bit but if you wanna have it completely electrically isolated, like if it's in a plastic uh, enclosure, or if there's a chassis ground and this is power ground, it is not usually wise to have your screw head just on your solder mask. If it wears through, it shorts on your power plane. And it took me way longer than it should have to realize how you do this. And all you have to do, this is a, just from the uh, official library, is a 2.527 millimeter. So if we want to peel back the solder mask, we can just go to uh, the local clearances, set our net pad clearance. So this is how far the copper stays away from the edge of the through hole. And since it is a uh, 2.7 millimeter through hole, we want it to be about three millimeters to give us a little bit of a gap. So if we make the net clearance 1.5 and then make our mass clearance say 1.6, what that does is now gives us copper removed and solder mask in that place. So if we go to our, and here actually, the 
and here this needs to be 1.6 and 1.5 and the reason that is important is you want to make sure you never have your solder mask and your uh, copper at the same exact location because there's always going to be some error in the PCB fabrication and you never want to risk getting a copper sliver that sticks out. So now with this you can have your uh, screw head resting on the bare FRP of the board and even if it starts to wear through that over time you're not going to have an issue with it potentially shorting out with anything. And the last thing, it's actually kind of the same thing that I was running into is with the fiducials. Uh, this actually I had a problem with, uh, I had to do a really bad workaround, is this is a fiducial part that I made and this is the official one that is from the KiCad libraries. And if you notice, this has the exact same issue that I mentioned just a minute ago. They have the solder mask and the copper at the exact same location on the board. So depending on how it is fabricated, you can get a little piece of copper that sticks out and that can actually mess up the vision system on a pick and place. I had that on a batch that we did like two or three months ago, they were getting false readings because the contrast here also had a contrasted point here from where the solder mask was misaligned. So the solution to this is to do exactly what I just did on the other is you have your net pad clearance a little bit more than you do your solder mask. For this one, I just have a actual shape that is drawn for the uh, uh, solder mask. So as long as you make your net pad clearance a little bit more than you have your solder mask, you're always guaranteed as long as it's within the specs of your fab house, which if they're off by more than a millimeter, you have a lot bigger issues than just a misaligning uh, fiducial. But these basically go hand in hand and it was just something interesting I wanted to point out. Um, I'm definitely still learning things with KiCad uh, every day. So if you, if you have any other ways that you've gotten around this, um, I mean, I think the solution that I have found just by offsetting the net pad, I think that works pretty well. Um, most other softwares, you can set a individual clearance for different parts, where in KiCad, you just have a global clearance for your uh, polygons. Um, maybe that's something that's coming later. Um, but for now, you just can go into here and here to adjust that. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, random video. Sorry if it got a little rambly and I just wanted to be able to get something um, out. And let me know again in the comments if you have any suggestions for future videos or if you like the ideas that I pointed out earlier or mentioned earlier, and I will hopefully be on a regular uploading schedule very shortly. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.